I'm Matzo from Assimilate. Join me on this series with Atomos, Assimilate and ProRes ROM. Hello there and welcome to our next video on ProRes RAW workflows. In this video I will show you how you can load lookup tables that you might already have onto your ProRes RAW footage, but more importantly how to create your own grade in scratch and export that as a 3D LUT to be used in any Atomos device or your camera of choice. So let's start by importing a couple of clips. Here we go. Let me quickly remove these two clips. Slightly different resolution, so away with that. Remove empty slots. And as you can see, our timeline right now is HD, but our clips are, according to the metadata stack, 5.7K. If you want to change that, you can very easily do that by just dragging and dropping a clip down here. Okay, problem solved. Now, let's go to color FX and zoom out a little bit. Okay, alt drag does that for you. Hide the layer stack, we're not going to work with layers today. And here in the QuickTime menu, we can see we are debayering to Rec 2020 and Panasonic VLOG. So let me quickly move this over here and display the scopes. Here, let me make them really small. Okay, that's enough. And well, let's go to the LUT menu and load a lookup table. I've downloaded a whole heap of lookup tables here. Choose just the first one and open that. Now Scratch has a nice function which is called the LUT cycler. So with these two arrows, I can just cycle through all the lookup tables that are in this folder and take a look at them, like such. And the all drop down right here gives me access directly to any of the LUTs in that folder. Okay, so we can bypass the LUT, it looks like this, log, and with the LUT, it looks like this. Okay, so this is how you can load a lookup table onto your footage. Now, if we want to copy this exact lookup table to all other clips, I can just hit copy here and go to the next clip, hit paste. And now basically I would just need to enable the LUT button here and not everything else, but since the LUT is really all that we have, I can just keep it like that. And now instead of hitting paste, I will hit paste forward. Paste forward means it gets pasted forward onto all clips from this point onwards. Hit that, confirm with yes, confirm a second time down here. And now we have the lot here, and here, and here. Okay. Now, that's loading a lot, but you can only do so much with lookup tables. Wouldn't it be much better to come up with your own kind of grade and save that as a lot? Let's try that. For this, let me create a version here and reset this one. So we are starting off with a lock image. So can go to balance and use offset and pre-gain or the primary menu to work with lift cam again. And by the way, if you hold down J, K or L, you can highlight these color wheels. And for instance, if I hold down K and drag across the image, I can move the color wheel as you can see. And if I use my mouse wheel, I can move the ring of the gamma wheel. So this is a really cool way to work with color wheels when you actually don't have a panel attached to your workstation. Right now let's go to the numeric menu and take a look at what we can do. So you know what I'm going to make the scopes a little bit bigger again like such. Now let's dial down the lift to make our blacks truly black. Bring up the gain a little bit and bring the gamma back down just a hair. Okay, lift our blacks a little bit again, something like that. Okay, so now we have contrast. If you hit the barcode or G on your keyboard, you can disable the grade and enable it again. And now maybe we can do something more contrast wise. Um, obviously we have a contrast slider here, but if you use that, you will quickly see that everything gets clipped. See the blacks and the highlights, how they get clipped? That's not cool. 
Instead, I'm going to use the S-curve parameter here, which, well, dials in an S-curve kind of contrast. And with that, it does not clip as much. This looks good. Let's add some saturation in, something like this. And now we have a, well, fairly well-balanced image, I would guess. Um, maybe we can go to the curves. Do some more adjustment here. Maybe bring it really down just a little bit. The blacks are a little bit too black for my taste, so let's bring them up a little bit again. Yeah, something like that. Okay, color-wise, mm, I don't know. I think the trees here, the greens, are a little bit too yellow. So let's go to the hue curve and drag yellow a little bit towards green. Something just a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. So if I hit undo, this is the before. If I hit redo, this is the after. I like this green much better. Next, we have the blue in the sky, which, according to my taste, looks a little bit too magenta-ish. So let's grab blue and dial it down a little bit towards cyan, something like that. Okay, undo, redo, this is pretty good. Now what I would like to do is saturate it a little bit more, so we can go to the hue set curve and just saturate blue a little bit more. That looks good. Now the last thing I want to check is the overall image impression. As you can see the water is a little bit green and we have the green stuff here on, on this shed and also the green here in the forest and overall it looks a bit muddy, a little bit too greenish. So let me go to the primary tab and dial the gamma a little bit towards blue. Something like that. Make it a little bit colder just to give it some fresh look. This doesn't look too bad. Okay, so now that we have dialed in our look, let's compare it to what the LUT did before. This is what the LUT did. This is what we've come up with. I like this one better. So how do we export that as a LUT to use in your Atomos recorder or your camera? Fairly easy. You just hit the save button down here. However, before we do that, let's quickly take a look here at the settings. And in the general menu, you have LUT export options here. And these are for either a 1D LUT or 3D LUT. Now, a 1D LUT is basically just about contrast, gamma curves. If you go to the curves menu and you look at this curve, whatever you can do with this curve, you can do with a 1D LUT and vice versa. However, a 3D LUT basically stores a 3D color cube. And the settings for this color cube are dialed in down here. Basically, how big should the cube be? This is a size of 33 points, which will work with most grading systems, most cameras, most LUT boxes, and also, of course, with Atomos recorders, such as the Ninja 5 or the Shogun 7. And here you can dial in the accuracy of the LUT. Now, generally, 10-bit and a size of 33 points is just fine and gives you good enough quality for monitoring most scenarios. If you need more, you can dial in more. However, make sure that the target software or target device can actually understand a lookup table of anything bigger than 33 points. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and hit the save button here. Let's go to my desktop and over here we can choose which kind of lookup table or color correction setting we want to save. Uh, a 3D LUT can be saved either as a 3DL or a dot cube. In this case we will choose dot cube and call it my look. Okay, it's safe. And now we should quickly do a test on whether the lookup table actually carries the look that we dialed in here in Scratch. So let me create just another version of this clip, like such, and hit the reset button here. So now we're back on our lock image. Let me go to the LUT menu, hit load, and now load our just exported mylook.cube. Okay, now if we switch 
between the version that has just our LUT on it and the version that has the actual grade on it, we can see that the image is pretty much the same. Very well. And now we can use this lookup table in our Atomos recorders or our camera directly. Let's take a look at how to load a LUT into an Atomos recorder. First, copy the just saved LUT onto a drive, which you can then load into the Atomos. On the Atomos, go to the LUT menu. We have up to eight slots that we can load LUTs into. The first slot already has a LUT loaded. Let's replace that with a new one by clicking the folder button. Confirm and select the new LUT we want to load into slot number one. Done. Now the LUT can be used in three ways in our Atomos. First, as a record LUT. This means that the LUT will get baked into the image. Be aware that this cannot be undone after recording. Once the LUT is baked in, you won't be able to get back to the original log image in post. Alternatively, you can apply the LUT onto the HDMI loopout of the Atomos, which allows for instant preview on a larger monitor connected to the Atomos. The footage itself, however, will be recorded without the LUT. Lastly, if we hit the compare button, we get a 50-50 vertical screen split that will show both the natural source video and the selected look of the LUT. Okay, that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll take a look at exporting in Scratch. So we will load our ProRes RAW files and debug them to the log flavor of choice and export them to ProRes 4x4 or ProRes 422 right out of scratch with the given log curve to be used in a third-party application. See you there.